Oh, there's an app for that. Mm. Excuse me. Ah. Much more effective. I get points for this, right? Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Kraft, back for another episode of Ask an Expert here at Singularity University, where I chair medicine and neuroscience and our exponential medicine program, here to answer questions from the Twitterverse about the topics we cover at Singularity University. Hark, a herald angel sings. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right, we didn't, really, we didn't really need that bird. Okay, Sebastian Soberg writes, what less than obvious use cases for virtual reality do you see in the future of medicine? Well, I think virtual reality and augmented reality are terrific examples of exponential technologies, which have a huge range of applications, including in health and medicine. So uh, aside from the usual use cases of you know, playing games, uh, I think there's some interesting ones. Let's take uh, mental health, for example. Um, you can put yourself in any environment, um, a safe environment for folks who might have post-traumatic stress disorder or fear of heights or fear of spiders or dinosaurs or tweet birds and uh, potentially uh, uh, get exposed to them in safe ways that can help rewire your brain uh, to different circumstances. So that's one. Um, other cases are being used in the clinic and the hospital. For example, patients who are taking chemotherapy and have nausea or getting uh, very painful therapies, for example, for burns, they're putting on VR goggles and being in cold environments with snow, and that reduces their perception of pain, for example. That's another interesting case. Third uh, is in, let's say, medical education uh, for a patient or a medical student or a nurse or a surgeon to walk inside their own heart or the heart of their patient, be able to manipulate it, uh, understand the physiology of a disease or normal anatomy. And we're even seeing surgeons now live stream their surgeries on VR and having thousands of people watching them in real time anywhere in the world, so opening up and democratizing education. It's a very exciting space, lots of innovation open, and as these technologies get cheaper, smaller, more available, uh, room to really invent and change the world. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Nothing personal. Obviously, it wasn't very effective. Here's a question from Intelligence Squared. What if you could see yourself if you keep, kept smoking or if you gave it up? Future you and augmented reality. Well, that's a great question. Uh, future you. I mean, because we know behavior change is really hard. And if you could see you of the future, if you kept smoking or kept having Twinkies for breakfast, that can play a really important role in the neuroscience of your mind and getting you to take action to skip the Twinkie or to skip the cigarette. With new augmented and virtual reality technologies, some of which you can download now on your smartphone, you can take a picture of you now, add 20 pounds, add 100 pounds. Uh, there's apps like Fatify and Oldify and Baldify. I'd encourage all of you to sort of look into your future self and then use that to inspire you to take proactive action to stay healthy and happy as opposed to waiting to getting overweight or uh, lung cancer or worse. Fly, way home. Okay, Heather McNeil writes, or tweets, as we continue towards the future of digital health, how do we make sense of all the data? Well, that's a great question because you could have all the data in the world tracking every piece of your activity and your sleep and your genome and your metabolome and your connected home, but it's a bit of a so what unless you can make sense of it and not be overwhelmed by it. And so we need to blend the data collection, which is growing exponentially, with the power of machine learning, artificial intelligence to boil it down, to make it understandable to you in context, uh, and to hopefully make it contextual and crowdsourced so that we can learn from this data. The lifeblood of clinical trials is data. And clinical trials today still take a dozen years or more, billions of dollars. The trick is getting the patients in, the data collected in reliable, smart ways. But now in our smartphone and mobile era, you can start to download clinical trials, amazing new tools to distribute and democratize clinical trials, to take that data from multiple places and multiple people in the real world, as opposed to sometimes the artificial environment of other clinical trials, and really speed up both drug development, smart app development, digital trials, uh, and that, which aren't just gonna be drugs, but drugs and therapies and devices with digital wrappers around them, and to personalize those and help folks stay on top of their healthcare and medical regimens. Data is king. Now we have new ways to collect it. We need to be smart about how we manage it, both the privacy angle and how to make sense of it. Um, but I think it's a brave new world for opening up clinical trials and speeding up uh, participatory healthcare and discovery around the healthcare continuum. Hey, this is Daniel Kraft. Check back next week for a new episode. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Daniel underscore Kraft. And, well, 
getting a case of the chirpies. Um, see you next time. Exponential Medicine is a program that we started here five years ago that explores the future of health and medicine through the convergence of all these amazing, fast-moving and convergent exponential technologies. AI, robotics, 3D printing, nanotech, how can they reinvent healthcare and medicine? Join us at exponentialmedicine.com.